Jane. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, the Senate is on the verge of enacting legislation included in the Consolidated Appropriations Act that would remedy the deep structural problems with our system of certifying and counting the electoral votes for president and vice president. These unfortunate flaws are codified in the 1887 Electoral Count Act, which guides the implementation of part of the presidential election process included in our Constitution. This archaic law, vaguely written in the inaccessible language of a different era, was intended to restrain Congress, but in practice, it has had the unintended effect of creating ambiguities that could potentially be used to expand the role of Congress and the Vice President in ways that are contrary to the Constitution. Despite its defects, this law was not an issue for more than a century because of the restraint of the people who exercised the serious but limited constitutional responsibility of counting the electoral votes. Vice presidents and Congress sustained the will of the people, even when they did not like the result. It took the violent breach of the Capitol on January 6th of 2021 to really shine a spotlight on the urgent need for reforming this law. Earlier this year, I, along with a dedicated bipartisan group of our colleagues, set out to craft legislation to reform and modernize the Electoral Count Act. Our bipartisan group worked day and night over the period of several months to reach a bipartisan consensus on a series of reforms that will prevent this outdated law from being used to undermine future presidential elections. I'm pleased that our legislation, the Electoral Count Reform and Presidential Transition Improvement Act, is included in the bill before us. This bill is the result of countless hours of deliberations by members of our working group. Co-sponsored by 39 senators, our bill enjoys, enjoys broad bipartisan support and was reported favorably by the Senate Rules Committee by a vote of 14 to 1 after an excellent hearing at which the committee members heard from a wide range of constitutional experts. I want to express my gratitude to my friend and partner in this effort, Senator Joe Manchin, and to all the members of our group for their work to craft this legislation. Specifically, Senators Romney, Shaheen, Portman, Cinema, Murkowski, Warner, Tillis, Murphy, Capito, Cardin, Young, Coons, and Sass ded dedicated countless hours to this effort. I also want to recognize Senators Klobuchar and Blunt. They are the leaders of the Senate Rules Committee. They provided their advice and counsel throughout this process and shepherded the bill through their committee. Leaders McConnell and Schumer co-sponsored our bill and trusted us to undertake this vital task. I want to thank all of the co-sponsors, as well as Representatives Gottheimer and Upton, who introduced a companion bill in the House of Representatives. In developing our bill, we also consulted with several election experts and legal scholars 
whose analysis helped shape the bill. Our bill would replace the ambiguous provisions of this 19th century law with clear procedures that maintain appropriate state and federal roles in selecting the president and vice president as set forth in the Constitution. It will also ensure that the electoral votes tallied by Congress accurately reflect each state's public vote. There are a number of important reforms included in our bill. Let me take just a moment to highlight a few of them. First, our bill reasserts that the constitutional role of the vice president in counting the electoral votes is strictly and solely ministerial. The idea that any vice president would have the power to unilaterally accept, reject, or change electoral votes or halt their counting is antithetical to our Constitution and basic democratic principles. Second, our bill raises the threshold to lodge an objection to electors to at least one-fifth of the duly chosen and sworn, sworn members of the House and the Senate. Currently, Madam President, it takes only a single member in each body to object to an elector or a slate of electors. I would note that in four of the past six presidential elections, this objection process has been abused with members of both parties raising frivolous objections to electoral votes. By raising that threshold from one member in each body to 20% of each body, we can do away with the completely frivolous objections while ensuring that serious concerns are still heard. Third, our legislation would ensure that Congress can identify a single conclusive slate of electors by clearly identifying a single state official who is responsible for certifying a state's electors, requiring Congress to defer to the slates of electors submitted by a state pursuant to the judgment of state or federal courts, and by providing presidential candidates with an expedited judicial review of federal claims related to a state certificate of electors. Now, let me be clear that this does not create a new cause of action. Instead, what this provision will do is ensure a prompt adjudication of disputes. To help promote the orderly transfer of power, our bill also includes clear guidelines for when eligible presidential candidates may receive federal resources to support their transition into office. I particularly want to thank Senators Portman, Coons, and Sass for their hard work on this portion of the bill. Madam President, nothing is more essential to the survival of a democracy than an orderly transfer of power. And there is nothing more essential to that orderly transfer of power than clear rules for affecting it. Our bill provides those clear rules. I urge my colleagues to support this historic legislation, and I thank all who are involved to bringing us to this reality. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.